sense, but that's exactly what's going to be happening. And it's sort of, I was talking about this before the match. I think game one is actually one of the most oh. important games in this series because it's going to dictate a lot of how these guys end up with their lineup. And Colento, true to how this priest has been all tournament, what a fantastic opening hand he has. Yeah, he has the circle of healing with the Injured Blade Master combination in Northshire. That's the, the holy trinity for Priest. And, and the coin as well. Oh, yeah. The, the, the Priest allowing uh, to get the coin to combo with the Wild Pyromancer also could be a really important And he picks up a smite to go along with it. I, I mean, can you can you pick a better hand for Priest to open with? I don't like think there's a better hand. If you could pick four cards versus Hunter, I think those would be the four that you chose. Yeah. Surprisingly, that is one of the hands that was very similar to the hand that Artosis used to win BlizzCon. Wow, and he picks up Undertaker after he's already played turn one, hot, turn one web spinner here. Yeah, sometimes it's how you gotta roll. So then, uh, if, you're, if you're Tyus, where do you even go for? Do you just have to ignore the Cleric because you have to wait till the Eaglehorn bow comes out? Or do you even try to freeze where uh, it is going I, on? I with think, the I think trap? you freezing trap for sure. Like, I think you just want to get it out of the way and hope that it doesn't really happen. I mean, you are thinking about Injured Blade Master, but if you let that draw too many cards, you are going to lose this game. Right. So I think you play Freezing Trap here, forego the extra charge potential on your bow. Next turn, you have Undertaker and Mad Scientist. Hopefully, you can use the bow after that to run away with the game. I agree with that line of play, but then again, uh, Dice wants to be very aggressive this game. You want to uh, rush Priest down before he is able to get to those Cabal Shadow Priest, to, to board clears, and, and before you run out of cards. So. Uh, I think there are actually two lines of play that you can uh, you can take. First, be very aggressive, just win by aggression, and second, just win mid game somewhere with high mains such belchers. But well, this is about to backfire yeah. big time because not only uh, is he going to be able to draw a card, he's going to put a really strong minion and be able to pick up an extra card off of killing this web spinner because freezing trap wasn't played. Well, hang on, he could just run into the mad scientist here and pick up three cards off the circle of healing. Oh, you're right, even yeah. a third card. Uh, I, that's the play I would tend to go to, especially he's got oh, Holy sure. Smite in his hand, he's already got Auk and I, he finds like another it. circle. I mean, Kalenjo's got everything going for him this game. But so at this point, he's just gonna measure whether or not he needs three cards. So in this game, he's gonna determine he doesn't, which, you know, I, I don't necessarily disagree with. This is gonna keep your uh, your injured Blade Master from getting kill commanded straight away, and then and then the happen to the Mad Scientist finish it off. Uh, so I, I, that's probably a more important Dominion protect, but just the, that the fact that he had the decision at his disposal if he wanted to draw three cards instead. He even picked up Shadow Madness, which is a fantastic card against the Hunter as well. Everything going Kalento's way this game so far. Tice has no way to reasonably respond to this board position. Well, you can start by trying to work backwards and, and kill off what was played in the very beginning, but it's like what Nim said earlier. As the Hunter, you're trying to be the aggressor, not the control player. And, and this is the opportunity where you're able to start getting a really good value from your cards because wow, you have the hero power, which has a lot of mileage. Even Shadow Word Pain picked up. He's just got answers for everything at I this point. I had no idea he was playing that card. <laughs> he even gets a yeah. Oh my god. Sludge Belcher. A sludge Belcher. Hunter the Creeper is not that exciting, but the Sludge Belcher is a very good card to get. Wow. So he's got Shadow Word Pain and two Holy Smites in his Priest. I mean, he is well equipped for this Hunter game, or uh, basically the Hunter meta at the tournament. So why do you think um, Tice opened with a Hunter? Was he expecting a... I think it's his worst deck in the, in the entire series. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just a throwaway deck for him at this point. Which is funny to say about a Hunter, uh, but yeah. he's got Priest and Warrior. Uh, and, I mean, his handlock wouldn't be bad even if he had it. And then, I mean, he's, he's got a lot of answers to... Maybe he tried deck. to uh, snipe for a Druid, because you open, uh, you, you open with Druid uh, often, and I think Colento actually opened with Druid versus Strife Crow, so he tried to aim for that. Uh, that, that, that. That definitely is the ideal scenario. Definitely not Priest, and uh, now he's going to have to pay for it. This Freezing Trap is also going to pop the Scientist back to his hand. Colento stealing the Mad Scientist. Wow. Basically, killing two traps for one. How on earth do you come back from this spot? I mean, Kaleto's still at 25, and you're, you're whittled down to your last three cards. Trust in the Lepernome. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to get it done this game. Kaleto is way far ahead right now. Tice is also out of cards, almost. He can't even, he can't even deal well with this. Fourth. I mean, he can kill the 4-5. Yeah, he ha I mean, you have to stop this injured brain master from ruling the board. But that, that's so much damage, again, that's been taken away. Is there an opportunity for him to go aggressive here, Admirable? Uh, you know, I'm not really seeing it. I mean, I'm staring at eight cards in my opponent's hand. Of course, we know one of them is Mad Scientist, so he's basically got seven cards in his hand. But, uh, I, I mean, just where's the opportunity? Like you said, this, this injured Blade Master is just going to rule the board if he doesn't take care of it. 
I think the only way is to draw the back to back high, uh, Savannah high main. Yeah, that, that seems like to be the, the, the case. other problem with that with going aggressive is just his, his, his hand context is it's difficult for him to really go aggressive with with three minions that are not really utility based. You just kind of you know you just start punching with them. He gets another Holy Nova. He played he played this uh, Hunter Keeper here because of a situation like this. Uh, if he if he goes to Knife Juggler or Panther, he's just gonna lose his entire board to Holy Nova. He's gonna have no recovery potential. He's going to lose the whole the whole board to double Holy Nova instead. Well, yeah, over the course of a yeah. couple turns. Is there any reason to not Holy Nova here? Just I mean, he motion. has a lot of ways to deal with the board, and he's just considering everything. I feel like Holy Nova is the best way to clean it up, especially that 4 2 Jungle Panther. Wow, if he played Sludge Belch, he would have picked up Kill Command. Mm. Mm, no, we've been putting damage. Yeah, and this is going to be. Tyson's about to get some really bad news here. I wonder if he's going to concede after seeing a second Holy Nova. No, uh, you, you I, can't I definitely concede. don't think he's going to concede the, in the finals. Grand finals. Of, yeah, it's definitely. That's definitely not going to happen. Wow, he's choosing to go with All Sludge right. Belch or Holy Smite. Uh, I mean, I guess it does develop his board, so this probably is a, is a... I mean, this is still really bad news for Tyce. Well, there is no beast. Oh, there oh, is one, though. There's one beast, but I, I, I still don't know if this is going to get it done. Well, for Tyce, it's actually pretty simple now. You get what you get, you play it, it tries to sneak in damage. Gosh, just <laughs> every paper is going to get deliver delivered every turn for the rest of the game. It's just going to have bad news on the front page. So basically, just news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine like Kalento is like he's he's like paper boy in the video game. He's like riding the bike oh and, he's, man. and he's throwing there's the like newspapers. Fire, there's like tires on fire <laughs> and people building construction. But, it's like but, why <laughs> on earth would you be doing laundry in the middle of the road, guy? <laughs> but ev but every house is Tice, and instead of hitting the mailbox, you're just breaking windows, and smashing your pots in your front door. I, I know the ending to that game too. You actually can't win, uh, and I do, I think it's very similar to Tice's situation. He's got double kill command, but I mean, Priest can heal from this point, and you have no clear way of getting to the point where Double Kill Command can end the game. Yeah. It's actually pretty interesting because if you have nine, nine points of mana, he could deal with both vultures and the, and the tokens as, as well. Oh, this is painful. Just using uh, your damage on the belchers instead of face. One of the belchers didn't even belong to him. He actually <laughs> stole that from you. So there's actually a third belcher somewhere in the deck. I don't think it didn't belong to his enemy. Well played, sir. <laughs> well played. Are we going to get a card in, in GVG? Uh, no, no, we're gonna get we're gonna get Cabal Shadow Priest to take out with a one-one. And in fact, uh, turn dog against his brother while being able to heal. This is a stop for game number one. Yeah, I, th I mean, this is what happens when you start out with Northshire Cleric, Injured Blade Master, Circle of Healing with the coin. And Shadow Madness and some shenanigans and double Holy Nova. Oh my <laughs> God, please. I mean, that is damage, but it's also getting to the point where he's taking a lot of damage too. He's at 13 health. In two turns, he dies. Oh, yeah. Oh, he can deal with the Belcher. I don't know if this is really dealing with it. <laughs> Just silent yeah. the kill command. <laughs> All right, that's seven points of damage coming from Colento. Six more, and it's over. Uh, <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to think of any combinations of cards that gets Tice out of this. I mean, he's not, like, he's not like running Ragnaros like, uh, like Life Coach, so he can't even reach for damage like that. His finisher of choice is... The high mains, but he doesn't even have any sign of that. He has to use kill command number two on another minion in order to stay alive longer. Yeah. He needs to extend his window. This is pretty much... Oh, uh, for, uh, first Sludge <laughs> Belcher. <laughs> Three Sludge Belcher is really easy to deal with if you're in Hunter's Let position. Well played. Yeah. <laughs> well played, well met. Uh, what up? What up? <laughs> I, I mean... Straight to the dome. What do you do? I don't know. Tice is going to be top decking from this point on, and I don't see any reason to continue other than you just want to see more cards from your opponent. Yeah, the only, uh, also the only thing you can do is Tice. Just think about the next deck you're going to take. Against Priest, you, you still have Druid, um, and you have your own... Do you have Warrior as well? Do you revive Hunter and go for a second chance? Uh, no, not right now. You don't. <laughs> like maybe, maybe a little bit later. I usually believe in second chances, but not against this. There, I mean, Kalento has absolutely I stole had the his eagle way. Word, Bo. Yeah, oh my gosh. I love it. By the light, stop. Scar of Druid is amazing. <laughs> well played. You have bested me. And there is nothing better <laughs> than a turn by the Frodo just exploded into a crater. Yeah, that final was actually pretty <laughs> tough. Hooray! <laughs> well, uh, you know, you can get that uh, turn one Yeti. 
coin innervate is a possibility here, and that could be the best start you imagine. Whoa, it's going to oh, he's going. He can, he can actually get it. He's got two Yeti back to back in turns now. It's a pretty solid. Uh, it's a pretty solid opener. Turn two Yeti, turn three Yeti is really tough for Priest right. to deal with. It's actually this is probably one of the. Whoa, Kalento just he could have smited him turn one. Why did he mulligan that? Not what you want to do, Admirable. I got bad news. He could have put that Druid down to 28. <laughs> wait till wait till Crackle comes out for Shaman, then we can make a case for turn one. <laughs> spells yeah. in the face. I can't Smite wait face. for Crackle. I want to be the guy, by the way, who like has to roll Spell Power Totem and then Crackle the opponent and roll six in order to win the game. Yeah, that, that'd that'd be so I mean sweet. that 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 feeling is going to be really one sided. I, actually, you know what? I want to be the guy who has to rip Sylvanas and then reincarnate the Sylvanas to steal a seven to one profit Velen from my opponent and then crackle for six to double it to win the game. That's the guy I want to be. To double it to 12? Yeah, that's the guy I want to be. That's some sick mob. <laughs> well, you know, this one power answer actually is a pretty decent answer to the Yeti. This, this is interesting. The curve has now introduced different elements of it that doesn't make it such so clear cut, but yeah. I think Yeti at turn two is still so strong. Oh yeah, so definitely gonna go with this. Kalento's gonna have to use both of his minions if he wants to take this out. I'm right. Pretty sure, unless he picks up something off his off his uh, hardwood shield, that's not gonna do it. Um, Maybe a smite. Yeah, I mean, he, smite actually would be really good here, ironically. But why would that be ironic? Because well, he mulligan for turn one. We actually, he wouldn't even have smite if he kept smite. He just would have smited him turn one. <laughs> Come on, Frodan. <laughs> yeah, we smite just talked about this. He could also misclick and smite his own face here. Um. As long as the uh, a turn to Yeti is fantastic, I think in this matchup having Wargrove is still a better option. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I think this I think this is working out pretty well for him. I mean, he does he does end up losing his Yeti here, but now he does get to take out this Northshire cleric. Right, but that was a trade for Innervate as well. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it ends up being like kind of like a one and a half for two. Yeah. So Leto had to forego a turn of development. I guess Tice has to go for, forego a turn of development here, but I don't think it really hurts that much because Coin still going to be really valuable as his hand pans out. I mean, you're still looking at turn six, uh, Ancient Allure. Shade is still going to be really strong throughout the course of this game. Kalento, he, he, this is a good turn for him, but that Shadow Word Death is actually, like, really, really changing this now. That Because the Ancient Allure, I mean, prior to this was... Oof. Wow, it picks up Circle of Healing, too. 4-9. Yeah, this, this is actually Goodness fantastic. Gracious. Also, just having to kill this Northshire Cleric, uh, Tice lost a turn. Like, turn three not playing anything, just shape-shifting is not a, the best play. Kalento has had injured Blademaster Circle of Healing in almost every single Priest game we've seen so far. And he's almost always had Northshire Cleric to go along with He's it. an excellent Priest player. Those seem to be the three magic cards. Maybe, I, maybe I've just been mulliganing this deck terribly wrong so far. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think so, if that's what it takes to win. And I mean, we have a smooth curve for Druid, but it has been disrupted. And now uh, this is one of the ways that Priest could fight back, is you had cards like Dark Cultist to fill out the curve, and you also have Injured Blade Master to fight back on board. So Yetis, uh, you know, the, the four attack minions like Druid of the Claw aren't as scary anymore. Yeah, it's hard to deal with this board. And also, uh, Priest has his, uh, their hero power that can, that can heal the minions if needed. You know, after watching the, the last match and, and watching how this one's been going so far, I've talked a lot in the past about how I thought Colento really, really traded into minions a, a little bit too often, but he has been ramping up his aggression a lot and really turning on the heat in spots where he doesn't otherwise have a lot of favorable trades on his opponent. It feels like Colento and Strifeco switched in terms of their philosophy. No, it really, it really kind of did. Strifeco was like really kind of over-trading in, so, in some of the games he was playing, and Colento has been kind of putting the pedal to the metal. And uh, it, sort of something I talk about with like Backspace and Firebat and, and uh, people who, who kind of have these little tiny mistake tendencies, we say they have an expiration date. But these guys learn really well, and it's only a matter of time until they figure out how to balance everything perfectly. And Kalento looks like, I, I mean, this, it, it's been happening this tournament. There's a very simple explanation. Those guys are on the same team and they are testing together. They are exchanging ideas. So I'm sure they influence each other's styles a bit. Well, talk about influential uh, influential here. Lothev will shut down a lot of the spells uh, and, and basically force it so that way he's just going to either use hero power to recover or he's going to play a minion. A minion is still a good option. Druid doesn't have a very good board clear potential. Uh, the combo is one of the best ones, but if, if you continue just killing and healing, you can even... Can you develop Pyromancer? I guess you do. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I feel like in this matchup, Pyromancer is a lot less about its actual effect and just more so just like a two-mana, three-two minion. I, th I think he's just very happy to get it on the board and hope to get some damage out of it. 
Oh, and the keeper of the Grove. Yeah, that was, a, that was an excellent draw right now. Yeah. Now he can get past the Belcher and yep. take out this injured Blade Master while being able to clear out some business. In fact, this is a boy clear. Uh, it's pretty darn close. Yeah, I think the Belcher stays as a 3-3. Free free. Oh, no, you're going to clear the Belcher. You don't let him heal that up. You just let him, let him have the Wild Pyromancer. You're not too worried about that. The problem with this is that you are a little bit weak to Cabal Shadow Priest. So that's something that Tice is thinking about. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's I mean, it's effectively because I mean, the, the three health is easy to deal with from this point on. Yeah. And then you, you have Ancient of Florida next turn, and they, they can't fight back that as easily. Uh, but he does have Shadow Word, and that's where you were saying it, it's a really valuable card yep. for him to start getting back some momentum because then it starts getting to the point where combo becomes a legitimate threat to how things uh, develop from that point yeah. on. If he, if he finds a, a safe turn to, to mind control, that's really what he's looking for. Right. So Cabal Shadow Priest definitely going to help him do that. Oh, he actually is going to go for the Wild Pyromancer. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Well, Pyromancer can still do yeah, something. It, it's too annoying, especially if you have a one health. Um, if you have a one health, Lothab. Yeah, especially against the, against the Priest. So Kaba is getting to get some value. But uh, other than that, Colento doesn't have that many cards in hand. And uh, he doesn't have draw potential. Where Druid has Wrath and Ancient of Lore. And a fantastic card, which is scenarios. So it seems like Druid is going to win the long game here. Well, if that's if it goes to the long game. Again, Colento, he's got the Shadow Word Death in his hand. If he picks up a minion right here, uh, and, and again, I know it doesn't seem like much, but that four extra damage that he dealt with that injured Blade Master, the turn he dealt it, it, it actually makes a pretty big difference in a situation oh, like this. Oh, he gets a minion. Yeah, I mean, he gets a minion. This is exactly what he needed. And Colento can now, again, continue to turn up the heat. And Tice is going to have to find a way to turn this. <laughs> which, which one of these do you heal? This is a really tough Whichever choice. Whatever is your favorite minion. It's like a yeah. Oh, well, we've, we've confirmed Dark Cultus is Colento's yeah. favorite minion. Yep. It's the new guy always. Yeah. Tice, though, really drawing some, some key cards in this matchup right now. You can coin scenarios, but I don't think just so defensive. Well, it doesn't really do anything. Your tokens are going to get run over. I mean, you're risking a second Shadow Word death. The 5 8 body can get some work done, but I think you just need to overdevelop this board and hope that your opponent doesn't pick it apart with like a holy over or something. What about the like rough swipe? But then again, you're clearing, and uh, this is a situation that Ruin doesn't want to find himself in, where you are backpedaling and you want to clear the board instead of just developing your board and going forward. I don't have a problem with rough swipe. I think you might be able to set up something better if you just taught this Druid to the call and play Shady next Ramos. Yeah, I think you like just it, have to play the If he does it this way, what he's thinking about, of course, is Holy Nova. Like, if he plays Druid of the Claw and Taunt and then plays Shaden X Ramos, he's really vulnerable to Holy Nova. You can just put the Cabal Shadow Priest into it and then clear his board and heal back up. That's a pretty decent one. That's a fantastic card for next turn. He will be able to clear anything. All right, so he's going to coin the Shaden X Ramos. Yeah, I mean, he just has to deal with the pressure of the board. That's still a reasonable amount of damage uh, if he left the Cabal Shadow Priest to his own devices. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, cool. Holy Nova still destroys this shaded next Ramus. Yeah, it's not quite as impactful as it would have been the other way. The other way, though, he just would have got Well, initial Great Master is not bad. Yeah, that's another good one. I mean, he just he needed to continue to draw minions. Yeah. So that way, uh, Tice, something to do. Yeah, Tice is forced into trying to play something that really impacts his board. But going into turn 10, he's going to have mind control. And then he's even going to have Shadow Word Death to follow that up. Tice is going to have to put together some really strong draws. Harrison's not going to be the start of that. So are you forced to use combo to clear? I don't think it's unreasonable right now, especially because Priest is going to have such a tough time uh, putting you back on your back foot when he doesn't have a lot of development going out, and it doesn't have a big burst combo. And Tyson, he's got plenty of cards to win this game with, so using combo here to clear is, it, it's kind of putting him in a position where he's going to have to end up killing his opponent with just kind of minion stuff, but he's going to dip low and I, I just, I don't, it feels like your opponent just has responsive stuff. It feels like he has something like Mind Control, Shadow Word Death, maybe even something like a uh, just another circle of healing stranded in hand. Also, if you're thinking about Mind Control, then uh, that's that's actually the play, right? Yeah. All right, well, the combo to clear is the choice. I mean, 10 health is still pretty reasonable, if you ask me. Oh, okay. Whoa, I, I thought whoa. he was going to... Oh, he wants to clear so, uh, at the correct order, so that way he doesn't uh, lose... So yeah, he's gonna value his own health. Cho chooses here. to unveil the shade instead of using his own life total as a resource here. Uh, it's just a matter of how much is that extra life worth. <laughs> well, he, he's got their exact answer. To yeah, it. but he probably <laughs> would prefer a minion there. Yeah, I'm just gonna heal him. It, so this is this has been good news for Tice now. I think this is a spot where he's actually able to start taking control of the board again. 
Yeah, and then also, how do you start leading the charge? Cenaris is one of the biggest minions. You usually want to get the heaviest minion yeah. creatures out of the way. Uh, and then that's where, like, mind control actually becomes, like, a pretty big deal. Because it takes a 5-8 body. Yeah, that's what he's thinking about. He's thinking about how the mind control affects this. Uh, oh, my gosh. Mind control does affect this yeah. situation. Wow. That's actually quite humorous. Yeah, that's really funny. Kalento, though, pretty much out of gas after that. Like, this mind control is going to help buy him some more time, but doesn't really have a lot of business in hand. Yeah, he needs to do it, too, because this is a lot of damage that comes out the other way if he has um, any other pieces to come. This is, this is like a mind control bait. It, it's just, it, he's just not really going to get much more value out of it than this. And mind control bait, that's, that's actually kind of a, a funny idea <laughs> from that. But, yeah, I mean, Cenarius is going to come down here, and again, this uh, the Shadow Word Death going to take out this scenario, so pretty good value on that end, but now he's got these two 2-2s to deal with. Needs something like Cabal Shadow Priest. So the so healing's just, not it. Just more spells. Oh, he has Holy Smite. It's yeah. Smite one of the well, I mean, you definitely can do that. It's. I don't know if he wants to do that right now. I think he's just going to hold on to it. He's fine with taking two damage for a little while. Yeah, two points of damage is not that much. And he can also Holy Smite next turn. Yeah, you never know if you draw Alcanized Soul Savage Priest. Roar. Pice is really getting together some scary amount of damage in a couple turns here. This draw is really important. All right, what is going to be? Oh, oh gosh. So you do develop the board. How scared are you of a possible Sludge Vulture? Uh, I mean, I don't think you're... If, if your opponent had Sludge Vulture, they would have played it. So you're not thinking about Sludge Vulture. What about a super aggressive play? Swipe face, keeper face. Attack for four. Well, you just you calculate if that damage is worth it or not. I mean, this damage on the board right here is lethal with just Force of Nature Savage Roar, so you don't really need to do anything else. Even if your opponent clears out one of these minions, you're still fine. So Cabal Shadow Priest still isn't that good. He needs uh, I? Uh, that definitely a pretty decent draw right now. And that's Hulkanai! Oh! Oh! Yeah, that Hulkanai Soul Priest gets a clear. I mean, it is at the cost of two cards, though. And his minion's not going to live because the druid can take care of it. Yeah, but the druid is really low, and you can still heal two points of damage here. Just uh, how can I clear? And then druid has only the combo on the hand. Kalento's looking at the deck, and what he's thinking about is how likely is it my opponent has Force Nature Savage Roar because he's already used one combo to clear, and he's only got three cards in his hand. So that's in the forefront of his mind at the moment. The thing that's, that that might give this away is that Keeper of the Grove hit the face for two. So if Kalento reads deep enough into that, he might put it together that maybe my opponent just has a Savage Roar even, and I, that's the kind of damage I don't want to take. So I think just to deny a, a potential Savage Roar, he might choose to Alkanize Circle here. Not necessarily thinking about full combo, but more so just about the potential to deny Savage Roar from being a damage right All now. Right. But he can just hero, hero Power and Holy Smite, that's also fine. Yeah, he definitely could do that. So he decided to heal himself yeah. and use the combo there. Actually, you know what? I think that Holy Smite and Heal actually in the Hero Power might have been way better. Yeah. Mm. You're still not that. Wait. Yeah, you're still not that com to combo. Yeah, it is true. And you would have had a much higher really health close, count. Really close, though. It's would have really had a much close. higher health count. He, gosh, I know that's that's really close. You swipe the face so you can set up for the lethal again. Um, this is probably a good, a pretty good position to swipe face. You've already seen uh, my control get out of the way, so you're not too worried about it. You might not want to set off alarm bells to your opponent. True. He might still feel like he needs to kind of grind this game out uh, in case some like a, a really strong draw happens. Like say Sludge Belcher happens off the top for your opponent. Dark Cold is even. Dark Cold is not such a strong draw. So how much damage is there? That's 19, 19. damage. Which is why swiping the face wouldn't have mattered because he would have been at 20. Yep. Holt onto Dark Cultist doesn't want oh, to get challenged. Oh, wow. That's a big one right yeah, now. Yeah, that's a really powerful draw. That's a great board development. I think Tice may have found a very strong route to victory at this point because this is a difficult board position for Holy Smite Silence Dark Cultist to overcome. Do you smite face now? Do you swipe face? <laughs> I was like, do you smite face now? Maybe you do. That's I like a pretty smite. It's a pretty easy way to concede at this My point. No, that was a uh, that was the thing that was, I, I'll take responsibility for for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, this, I, I think you have enough pressure here. If he heals back up to 22 after you hero power him down, you still have a lot of pressure if the one two sticks. I say he eliminates the first body of the Sledge Belcher. Yeah. The that, only that's what exception. He's about right now. 
The only exception is if he damages the Sludge Belcher and then Shadow Madness steals it, right? That... That's like, a potential... Yeah, that, I mean, that, that won't keep him alive for another turn. Shadow draws that Two Holy Smites not going to do it, though. I don't uh, even want to show it, though. You have what, two Holy Smites. I'm, I'm pretty sure Tice knows it at this point. I'm certain he watched that entire last match and saw pretty much every single card he could have possibly seen in the one before that as well. Yeah, this is tough. This is 25 points of damage, and Kalento actually doesn't have a way to clear either of these minions out. Well, now, I mean, in his mind, he still doesn't know that sure. he might die to the combo, but yeah, it's but starting it pretty likely. That could do it. All Tice has to do is count up this damage. Yeah, I mean, he knows. I mean, this yeah, is he's not his head. Druid. And he's going to tie this series up one game to one. Wow, both of these guys got kind of into top deck war. And I have to say, when you get a top deck war with Druid, it's pretty much a bad position to be in because their draw density is so high of how these matchups work out. It's just, it, Warrior is not a good matchup into this. And again, just reviving his Priest right now is, might just be a bad call. I think he's gonna ha should have more confidence. So how good is uh, turn one Innervate Shadow Next Ramas in this matchup? Uh, it's pretty good. Any t any Innervate uh, lead is really strong. Uh, Shady Next Ramas in this matchup is in particular pretty strong because you kind of can look at the past circumstances of the game to, to really understand how you should flex this card. So sometimes you'll use it to clear out minions, and sometimes uh, you'll just keep it tucked away until you can find a big Savage return. But sometimes with the way that the game has gone, you kind of get the feel that maybe you can just attack your opponent for four or five, and they don't really have a way to deal with it. So that, that's a play that happens very often. Say, like, going into turn five, the board gets traded down. You'll just attack with Shaded Next Ramus. They'll have Spectral Knight, and you'll get in another attack with Shaded Next Ramus. The 10 damage swing in that position is usually too much to... Uh, to really recover from easily. Oh, wow, he actually decided to keep double Innervate. Uh, I, that's not a surprise whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, Innervate I mean, no. and Tempo is the way you can take a commanding lead in this matchup. Yep. At this point, like, probably Spectral Knight or Cho and Yeti's gonna be his best draw. He still has a lot of two drops because, like, this Druid is different. And uh, a Swipe, I'm not sure how good Swipe is. He definitely wants minions. Uh, swipe is fine. Just, again. <laughs> Any one of his two drops or something like a, uh, a Spectral Knight or Chill and Yeti would have been his best draw, though. All right, he needs a five drop or a four drop. Uh, what about Tice's hand? Double Yeti. There is a lot of potential, but not this turn. Now, Tice's hand is looking kind of slow. I mean, this is one of those hands where you're kind of hoping that you can get in a position where you can start trading with your opponent instead of having your opponent you know, start swinging for the fences. So this is probably, seeing how the hands developed so far, it's probably a bad idea for Kalento to unleash the shade. Now, next turn is gonna be another story. If, it, if Tice fails to do something really important next turn, this shade is gonna come out at five points of damage, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then you have to spend a turn addressing it, whether it's like Keeper of the Grove, uh, and then from that point on, your opponent can take the initiative advantage based off his board. Now, Joe and Yeti is still going to be pretty strong as well, but I mean, at the same time, getting that Innervate this has been so valuable for Kalento. Wow. He's got so much removal. But he's not getting any minions, and even if the Shade is going to grow, when Kalento unleashes the Shade, there's Keeper of the Grove just waiting for uh, yeah. for it to silence He's, he's going to draw a card with Wrath. And then Innervate Swipe if he needs to. I, I think that's what he's going to do. It's all, it's also, I mean, it's fine to use the Harvest Golem instead too, and then also attack for five, but I think this is the turn where you're, this is the turn where you risk your opponent having Keeper of the Grove or not. If they don't have Keeper of the Grove, you're gonna run away with the game, and if they do, uh, you know, not the worst position to be in. Yeah, I, I like I like using the Innervate here. And this, again, you have two swipes in your hand, so you're just looking to dig for a five cost menu next turn to make sure you can play on curve. Whoa! Uh, okay, that is an alarming play. That's He wants his opponent to hero power next turn. Uh, I think he does, but remember, this also opens you up to Wrath, to Swipe, and a Hero. I mean, your opponent now has three different ways to deal with it. And if they have Keeper of the Grove, it still, it still deals with it. I, I mean, think he wants to bait out the Keeper, and then he will charge into it's the not, Keeper? It's not really baiting it out. It's that if he just would have Innervate Swiped, he'd have a 5-5 five, five on the board. His opponent would, would Keeper this, and then you would still be in the exact same position, except you'd have an extra 2-2 two -two on the board. The, the trade-off would be you would be minus an Innervate and a Swipe, but you would have also dealt five extra damage and you'd still have, the, again, a 2-2 a two -two on the board. You'd be hitting your opponent for four right now. Like, you'd be dropping him to 18 and you'd have a 2-3 Harvest Golem, a 2-2, two -two, and a 4-2 on the board. Well, you know, on the other hand, is actually this Shade of Maxtramas was able to deal with the coin, with the Yeti, and soak the damage from Keeper. Now, again, the benefit of this, though, is that Kalinto now does have two swipes in his hand. So this is a pretty difficult board position to climb back from. 
Uh, yeah, especially since Tyson has to spend a little bit of mana every turn to deal with what's on board. Yeah. But that's where having that three drop really does fit in. If it's not in the shade of the next champs, he did have that farce here. Now you enervate double swipe to deal with this shade. I, I mean, I don't think it's that bad of a play, I mean, honestly. Hmm. That, that's, actually actually, that's actually viable. Um, I, I think this is going for dome and trying to unveil yeah. the shade naturally is probably a little bit better because none of neither of these minions no, that get it's attacked a, are it's very a lot valuable. Better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not how you want to be using utilizing the swipes here. I mean, they need to be jockeying for board position. Yep. Um, especially now that we're getting to the turns where maybe your board's a little bit better, you can swipe, remove, and start pushing for damage. It's, it's kind of tough, actually. I, I really don't mind double swipe. Uh, of course yeah, you yeah. don't, but <laughs> I, I mean, because Admirable like, tries to do as much damage as possible every single turn. Yeah, I, I agree with Admirable. I mean, hiding the double swipe is just um, concealing the damage you have. Like, upon, Dice right now has 12 points of health. Effectively, I think I would have thought about this turn a little bit longer. I, I don't think double swipe is the right play, but I, I'm trying to find the merit behind double swiping versus saving it. And I think saving it's probably a little bit better. I think saving yeah. it is better. I agree. Can we all agree that it's, it's, it's a little bit better? I think so. Cool. <laughs> and now we see a chill and Yeti being played <laughs> onto the board. Uh, this is a really important moment for Tyson because if he can stabilize, the quality of his hand is vastly superior to his opponent if yeah, he just keeps picking enormous. up spells. Clinton needs a 5 drop right here. Or, an, or an Ancient Lord. Just some minion. Yeah. A non-utility okay, minion. Okay, you know what? Oh, Sorry, I, I should have clarified. Yeah, that a non-utility minion. minion is what he needed. I still, I still think he's pretty likely to, to innervate it out. Okay, no, he's not likely to innervate it out. Yeah, I forgot. Tice actually has Ragnaros in his deck. Yeah, yeah. If this was like a, like a more standard Druid matchup, I think that he would consider innervating out this this big game hunter just to try to get the ball rolling. Oh wow! Ooh. But Tice is at like a really dangerous life total right now. Yeah. Also, like I mean, in the back of your mind, you worried that you might actually die. Oh yeah, he's thinking about combo right now. Yeah, for like, sure. even though your opponent has eight mana, it's a, it's a likelihood that he does have it. It's funny how confusing Colento's hand is because being Tice, you've seen one swipe, you've seen one keeper of the grove, so you can assume that there is not the second one waiting in the hand, where both are there. I think he's definitely thinking more about Black Knight since all four cards in Colento's hand seem to have been hold these in my hand style cards. So, you know, he's thinking about damage spells, but Black Knight, I think, is, is a much bigger card that he's thinking about right now. It's pretty easy to look at Druid of the Claw and I think maybe you should just jam this down in taunt mode and, and take control of the board. But again, Black Knight is what's in the back of his mind. I actually I actually like healing here because you're already so far ahead on cards that if you stabilize with a hit right. like this, you probably aren't going to need more cards to win. Ooh, and that's yeah. uh, what, exactly what you were alluding to earlier in uh, the, basically before this game, because this is what you can suffer from by having such an early game start. Yep. Not a creeper going to come out. He's going to need to pick up something like an Ancient War really soon, because not only does he need Savage War, but he probably needs another minion or two to go along with it before this ball really gets rolling. Yeah, he needs to get that Savage War. Keeper of the Grove is still fine because he has Silence for a possible taunt. Oh, oh my gosh. A fantastic card to get. Yeah, that's a really problematic card for other Druids to face off. How do you deal with scenarios usually? Uh, well, you hope to kind of enter the game before your opponent has a really favorable scenarios turn. Yeah, basically you hope to have a, a board when they play scenarios on empty on their side. Black Knight's still in the back of his mind here. I'm curious if he's choosing whether or not it's going to be worth to risk it or just charge to the 2-4. I like the charging instead. He has so much heal potential wow. on this druid. He is playing around every possibility at this point. Shade. Shade is not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's another minion to stick, and if you can get close to the combo, but it's like Admiral said, he needs a little bit of extra juice here in order to finish off his opponent. Uh, positioning implies that he has Defender of Argus in his deck. With Echoing Uses and Haunted Creepers, I think it's, he does, it's not right? uncommon to see Defender yeah, of Argus, okay. and I'm pretty sure we saw it earlier. Right, right. Well, my apologies. Decks have been blending in a little bit between yeah, each yeah. other. I mean, it's been a long we've seen day a here. lot of druids. Oh yeah, there's been so many, and not only that, but we've seen like four or five variations kind of coming into it too. Second druid of the claw picked up for Tice. Do you just slump scenarios? I think it's slump scenarios. Even if there's savage roar, what about Sav is savage roar co combo lethal? Uh, if you slam scenarios, it looks like it's lethal. That's a hero attack, attack from the spider. 21 damage. Five. If you slam scenarios, he's got 21 damage with full combo, but he's only got two cards in his hand. All right, then it's actually a very well, difficult I'm choice. sorry, he's got 21 dam overkill damage. He's probably just going to swipe is a really safe play here. That's almost certainly what he's going to be doing. 
Like, he wants to reduce the board. Colento's down to, to very little left. There's a pretty decent potential that he's got something like combo in his hand. I imagine Harrison's probably going to be played this turn. Uh, well, you still actually died a combo, so you need to play Druid of the Taunt. Oh, that's right, because what it's going to be buffed one. Yep. Yeah. So he needs a hero power or play Druid of the Taunt. <laughs> I prefer yeah. Druid of the Taunt here, or Druid of the Claw. <laughs> Druid of the Taunt. Uh, you, you're trolling me, Adderall, because I messed up. Druid of the Claw here, because if you had that Taunt... Uh, ooh, really? Oh, he I, I think doesn't respect the combo. Well, right. I mean, your opponent does have two cards in their hand, so if they don't have combo now, they're going to have to draw exactly whichever piece they're missing if they have one of them already. I just like eliminating the possibility, but if you, it's like you said, he's playing around the possibility of Black Knight. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a huge draw. That is the perfect draw for Kalento right now. There's a Savage, Savage Roar. Roar. There's a Defender of Argus. Now Kalento, of course, he's going to be thinking the same thing. Black Knight for my opponent. How likely is it, and does it cost me the game? Can he just use a defender on one target, the shade? Um, it's it's possible. He's thinking about combo in the same vein too, though. Like he's looking at it and like, is this gonna kill me? Is there a way to play around? Is there a way to effectively play around it? You can if you kill off the Harrison. Oh, if defender, innervate defender, and uh, kill the Harrison, I, then I you have a six-six sounds. I don't mind big game hunter either. I, I do if you know your opponent. Oh, wow. I was not thinking about this possibility for clearing. I mean, it is yeah. all clear. This is actually, you know what? When I look at this, this is actually really good because he ends up with a 5-5 on the board. Yep. This plays around combo extremely well. Challenges whatever minion you oh, can yeah, only that, throw out. That's, that was perfect. But now, again, back on Tice, he's thinking about combo, but I think if you didn't see it last turn, probably isn't there. Well, yeah, so. not to mention his opponent just used a piece of the combo, too. Yeah. What does it usually mean, though, when you see a piece used? Is he more liberal with it because he's the second one? Yeah. Oh, but Snarr is a safe play, more or less. And you can't play all uh, around the combo all the time. No, sir. Oh. Another defender. Well, he Gosh. can play everything he has. Feels like can. one of the weakest draws in his deck. I, I would tend to agree with that. And there is no way to play around Black Knight now. Well, there is. You just don't taunt anything. <laughs> But there's only so much rationale that can be So you put up. Defender of Argus on the very far right. No, I'm saying the you very, still play Defender of Argus. Very, very far right. Like, like, not even next to the Ancient Allure far right. <laughs> just, drop, put it, just drop it by his Nexus Treants. <laughs> put it by the end turn button. Every Big game hunter before <laughs> Ragnaros, but he, he realizes that there's been opportunities for his opponent to drop it. Yeah, he has to do it. Wow, look at this. That's a full board, but... Yeah, I, he's going to get some good news, actually. His opponent doesn't have any way to really effectively play against this. Just kind of what he's got. Yeah, he's just got raw minions to power yep. through, but he is out of cards. So, Coletto will be left top decking, and against a deck that has stronger minions and, and just less echoing oozes, I think... Tides is in a really good position. Yeah, now this is a clear signal for Tides that Colento doesn't have a Black Knight in his hand. Uh, is that what no cards in hand means? I, I Certainly. Think, I'm pretty sure that's what no cards in hand means. You could double check. Yeah. Is there a Black Knight? Well, oh, here's no, the, here's okay. the thing. If he taunts it, it's kind of not really getting much more done than just, uh, than just charging it into a 3-4. And in fact, I think a lot of times it does a lot less. Uh, to, I, I, just straight away, the play that I'm seeing is Scenarius into the 6-4. Don't attack with a tree in. Charge into the 3-4, Sludge Belcher to protect this 4-1, and hope that the 4-1 can get extra value. I mean, you the take less damage. Yeah, the, alter the well. alternative to this is keeping your scenarios that at a slightly healthier life total, yep. but you lose your Druid of the Claw potential to uh, to get maybe an, an extra bit of value next turn. That's true. You also play around the, the Wrath for one, but I mean, he's he's just lining it up so that way Kledo has awkward attacks. Oh, oh, gosh. Uh, oh, that's a minion at least. Right on time. Well, it, it is a minion. <laughs> not exactly the one you're wanting. Well, it's actually two. Yeah, actually two minions if you get a Savage or well, maybe it possibly. duplicates itself. It does. Yeah. Unfortunately, you don't have Mark of the Wild or Defender of Argus or any of those cards it's supposed to synergize with. I actually kind of want to duplicate an Echoing Ooze now and then play both the Echoing Oozes and get more Oozes. For this uh, another duplicate? Yeah. Deception. <laughs> you need to have a way to buff oh, it, though. Oh, wow. That is a really bad <laughs> draw right now. These guys are going back to back, uh, reverse huge draws. I think small that small draws. Yeah. Dice had that, actually that's, that's the opposite of you. That's a tiny draw. Do you agree that Dice had better cards, and now <laughs> Colento might start top decking the cards he needs? 
Uh, well, I mean, Coletto still has two copies of Uzi and two copies of Haunted Creeper that he has to go through. True. I mean, you pushed her damage. Yeah, yeah, no oh, oh, yeah. I mean, your opponent's freaking out if you attack for five. Of course, when you go to attack for five and then hesitate, maybe a, less, a little less freaked out about it, I think you should have just gone five to the face and started looking to end this game. Yeah, don't, don't be afraid, man. Just get in there. That's five points of damage. Snares isn't afraid. Do, do you know what I would do for a chance to deal five points of damage? What would you do? Uh, I. Probably more than I do for Klondike Bar, but I, I, Cenarius punches as hard as an Arcanite Reaper does. I think yeah, it's mostly, yeah. mostly about protecting the big. Wow! Hunter. Savage Roar I drawn. Mean, that helps clear the board a little bit. Well, it, sort of more of the story is that so he actually chose to attack a minion here, and the, and the last Savage Roar <laughs> that's in Kalento's deck is what he drew to help prevent right. against the board getting traded down. But. Is, is there any way to still win with the combo top deck? I think he will be still off. There's 19, you can do free now, free red now. No, it's too much. Not unless your pro your opponent ignores your minions. Uh, and I think Savage Order Clear here is Kalento's best option, but I mean, that also means that he is out of combo opportunities. Wow. Yeah, this big game hunter will start, start pummeling. Uh, he's got the beast in his sights right now, and that beast is Kalento. This guy's going to start beating for four. Tice has actually got a pretty massive advantage oh, with man. nine points of power on the board to I mean, nothing and no cards. It was only up from there. You, I mean, he, he doesn't have anything else to draw other than Wild Growth to, to start straining through his deck. Uh, Force of Nature will be a very bad card. Oh, look at that. Well, I mean, you're still going to be taking damage from your yeah. opponent. I think it's just a little bit too much at this point. Too little, too late. Even if he draws... Uh, Savage Roar, he's okay. You can still play it and end the game yep. right here, right now, and take a commanding lead in the series. What seven mile <laughs> wide grow? Yep, <laughs> not you're playing that thing. Can you innervate this wide grow? <laughs> you, you can, you can innervate it, you yeah. Can, but uh, let, let's also just play wild growth for what it is. So, is I actually gonna be able to draw an extra card? Next not turn yet, either, not cause, yet, because the excess man is gonna cost five. It's still fascinating, like, both of the players use all the cards in their hands, like, all the tools. Is he really thinking about taking out this little uh, That would be a travesty, I think, at this point. He is thinking about it, though. He is a super safe player. I mean, Tice is controlled by heart, and he wants to control the board, but you can't die from this. He's thinking about what happens if his board gets cleared, if his opponent has Keeper of the Grove and yeah, just takes I, out the Lothab. I think so, too. Is he thinking about a third Saboteur? Yeah, he's... <laughs> He's also I know the answer to that one, Nims, and it's no. He's All thinking right. about Druid. I don't know the answer to I mean, many questions. About the claw. Yeah, I mean, you got to go for face here. I mean, if he top decks it, God bless, man. I mean, he's got no cards. <laughs> you have a commanding position. You're you going to draw two cards health. next turn. You and have, rag down you have to five. Ragnaros on oh, the top. Oh, gosh, another <sighs> one of these early game minions. Oh, was like, All right. What a I guess brutal I can see. sequence. Yeah, I, I'm not feeling a Kalento on this one. Well, he can't stay alive for one more turn. For one turn if he trades Bare off yeah, the... Barely. But that's no way to live at one HP. No, for sure, by the skin of his teeth. I mean, his opponent might just straight out kill him with whatever he draws, whether it's damage, uh, whether it's an ability to, to buff <laughs> this creature by a little damage. bit of attack. <laughs> Savage War, Force of Nature, Swipe, Drew the Claw. I don't even know. Maybe even Ragnaros. Wrap the face. That's a wide growth. A win with a big game hunter. What a way that is in the Trid Mirror. Uh, okay, well, that's not, yeah, that's gonna, not damage. He's going to draw one more card. Still first. going for it. Anything, yeah. anything with damage. That is ah, damage. There that you is go. damage. Tyus takes a 2 1 lead now in this Druid Mirror. The story of this one, of course, boy. We love Druid, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the mark of Tyus right here. This Druid deck has been phenomenal for him all tournament long. Yep. But once again, he's going to need a little bit of help off of the Mulligans because he needs a better start than this, that. Yeah, this start already looking better for Kalento too. He wants to actually use Haunted Creepers deck we use, you know, in the early game where he want, where he needs to draw them as opposed to turn, you know, 37 where oh, Haunted oh Creepers not very good. God. That draw from Oof, Tice is Miserable and the draw from Kalento Oof. is outstanding. That's not a wide growth from Dice. Uh, that's not much of anything. I mean, from he Dice still right has now. he still has a chance to draw wild growth next turn, but oh boy, that is ugly. Yep, and he will be very disappointed. Oh, oh wait.
<laughs> An early shade of next Rambus. But do you really go for shade now, or do you just coin I the, mean, the ooze? I guess you do have a really good smooth curve, but I, th I think he's going to innervate shade next Rambus. It's probably the most, it's probably the most powerful card in this matchup to play turn one. It's, it like, doesn't cost you very much to play it; it just continues to grow. Yeah, I mean, even though you do value the curve, you, you get good amount of power for the investment. It's essentially trading it for two, two extra damage, two two stats. Yeah, that speaks up a, a keeper, which is something. But uh, he won't be even able to play it on turn three, and if he picks up an innervate, that's not a card he needs. I think like he really needs an innervate to be able to use Force of Nature to clear the board on turn four. Well, I that's definitely a possibility. I don't know if you want to use Force of Nature just to clear out one twos, but they will be dealing a lot of damage. Essentially, it's like a two four. Uh, oh, he's really thinking about unveiling the shade here. I think it's a bit early. Not playing around Wrath, I think, is, is probably a little bit aggressive, you know, to to say, well, you got me if he's got Swipe. Not yeah, such a bad play. Yeah, that way you out. I think you tr you traded in that Innervate essentially to get two extra buffs, right? Yeah. Uh, that's that's what you want. Attacking that early would be... That'd be disrespectful, <laughs> to say the least, to, uh, to, to Tice. I, I, I would be in favor of that. 4-4. Four, four. I, I still think he can't unleash it this turn because now he's seen a, a shade from his opponent. Right. Yeah, and, then all, and also the potential for swipe. But not that I think swipe is is that bad of a situation. I think you're actually pretty thrilled when your opponent swipes your, your shade next round in this spot. Do you yeah. swipe being tight? Just attack into the 2 free swipe. Um, I don't think... You, that's not really doing anything. You're clearing out an ooze and a, and a harvest golem token for that. I'd probably just, probably just silence here. What about just playing Keeper and killing one of the Uzus? You develop a minion that, that is contesting the board, you clear part of it. Well, that's that's really what's so tough about these Echoing Uzus is because the, the value they provide is that they're expendable. So you're hoping that your Druid that curves out a lot better when you're kind of going into the mid game and into the late game. Yep. And when you're on the other side of it, it's like, do I really want a Keeper of the Grove a 1-2? They kill half of the minions. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very similar to like how Feral Spirits operates, where oftentimes you're using, like, if you have spot removal, it's, it only it's going to do half the job. Yeah, it's, it's like the minion's so crappy that you don't want to kill it. But it's like annoying enough that you do need to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, you do. It does add up over time. So, so the longer you, you put it off, the, the more value that they actually get from it. Wow, is he, is he, he's actually going to swipe here. He's going for the swipe. Well, he has to do something. Like, this board is really scary if there's a savage drawer. Ooh. I think Keeper's better than Swipe is. That, I mean, yeah, Swipe is just he's playing with one straight into what Kalento wants, though. Because, I mean, he didn't really have a turn four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now he does have a clear one. That's a fantastic Swipe for Kalento. There's even a Black Knight now. Yeah, I and mean, now it's time for the Shade to come out. It is pretty much uncontested. He's seen Keeper. It's out, of, it's out of Swipe range, out of Wrath range. This is a really bad position for Tice. Well, at All least right. he picks wow. up a five drop. I mean, yeah, he has, what, five in the deck? Yeah, <laughs> so. I, it's, gosh, it's even getting contested straight away. But even in this spot, I'm probably just going to go to the face with this uh, with this Shaded Next Ramus. There's no reason really to trade it into this Lothet because the only thing it's threatening is one twos, and you're getting in six extra point of damage to do it. And Kalento even recognized that, wow, I am so happy to see Kalento really turning up the heat when he's got the cards to do it. Mm -hmm. And now his opponent has to spend his turn once again removing and not being able to set any questions, and he won't be able to take care of everything on board. Do you force the nature to remove the shade? Uh, that uh, looks like something you're going to have to do right now because you're expending too much to do anything otherwise. And that's how bad uh, comeback mechanisms for Druid are. At this position, it's just so tough. A one, a turn one minion being removed by a turn six card. Yep. You know, Tice is, that's the second time Tice has actually hovered over that card. I think Kalento might actually genuinely believe that that's Whoa. an Oh, Oh, he's one damage off lethal. One, two. Oh, no, so he's two damage because he can't hero power yeah. as well. That's still pretty close. Yeah, this Ancient Lore is going to get some work done here. Yep, just dig for the answers. And again, these one, these early 1-2 minions in this Druid matchup, he just... Tice hasn't had time to deal with them, and it's added up to so much damage, and it's enabling a Savage Roar at this point. I mean, the Echo Wings has been around since turn two. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> this is a ton of damage this, this has brought to the table. But that's the risk of this deck. If you draw those cards, you, you, you have a really good start, and you win the tempo against an Arrow Druid, but if you don't, you end up in a position like the last, like, like the last time. Is he dead no matter what he do, does? That's six, eight. Looks like he dead no matter what he do. 10, 
I was really hoping you'd hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still still alive if he if he's he swipe. Power. Okay, if he hero powers. Okay. He looked dead to me. If he kills off the if he kills off the spiders and then swipes. And Savage Roar, oh my gosh, it's so this bad. So gross. That's so bad. I don't know, like, this is really difficult to do. Oh, well, um, now he is I mean, not he's, dead. He's just got to do it. Yep. He doesn't have an option. It's, it's survival mode, and so yeah. he stays alive. Do or die for Tyson that turn. Kalento has a lot of gas in his hand, though. He's, this Keeper's probably just going for the dome. No, I mean, he, 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 can, <laughs> he can just set up minions so that way Savage Roar is good. I mean, yep. Basically, only Shade next Remus has a stick. Keeper face, Shade of next Ramos, and then you have Savage Run and Swipe for next yeah. up. Do you keep the Keeper in case you want to silence? Silence what? A taunt. Uh, well, you have Black Knight in your hand, so I don't think you yeah, really... You yeah, want, but you, you, want you, can't, you can't Black Knight Savage Run. So you do... So you can keep her Savage Run next turn. Well, but yeah. if you play, like, a... Uh, I mean, which is no, I'm not, I don't have any opposition to like playing uh, Shade Next Ram and just swiping his face either. I'm, I'm okay with that too. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. I, I think I would tend to keep her here just because it's a little bit tougher for your opponent to deal with. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it feels really weird to turn Keeper of the Grove into into just Stormwind Knight. Oh, it's fine. It's a <laughs> it's a very tough minion to deal with. For the king. For yeah. I mean, it's it's like the reverse. It's like a cheaper reverse version of uh, Stormpike Commando as well. <laughs> also, uh, Shadow on the Shams will have five attack after Savage Roar. He's yeah. got to go for it, but the outcome is the same regardless, and Kalento will even up the series, sending it to game five tied up. Wow. I want to see another Mirror Druid versus Mirror. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I think we will. Yeah, it's I, either that or he revived the Hunter. I think Tice I think Tice is just like, I think he wants his revenge. He's done a fantastic job with his Druid so far. You know, he's been touting his win rate with it, and... I mean, I don't disagree with it. His Tyson's opening. This is looking pretty rough again. I mean, this mulligan really going to decide a lot. And Kalento starting off with Harvest Skull. Harvest Skull is such an interesting include in this deck because he also has Shade next Ramos. It's really a testament to how much he values the curve in a Druid deck like this. He, just, he wants to maintain. He wants to maintain some sort of board presence the entire time and keep his opponent on the back foot. Well, I guess he is searching for those two drops. Wild Growth, yeah. Innervate. Now, here's the thing. Harvest Golem in, in sort of old Druid decks pre Shady Next Ramus was almost always a keep in your opening hand. In this deck, it's fine to mulligan it away because he's still got three more three drops that can replace this. And again, he's really digging for cards like Innervate, Echoing Ooze, and Haunted Creeper. How important the coin is in this matchup? Very. I, I think in, 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 this kind, in this kind of Druid matchup, Colento's deck is much more dangerous with the coin than Tice's is. Uh, with that being said, uh, I think that. When Kalento doesn't have the coin, it's it's a lot easier to kind of weather the storm. That's really what he's looking for. Not so much as the coin in his own deck, but rather to deny it from Kalento. Double full mulligan from both players. Who's going to get a better hand? It's pretty good from both these players. You know, I, I would I would consider Decent. this I would consider this fairly even. Yeah, I agree. Shane next right. Ramos is going to wait that. Yes, in but in favor though, and no. the second Savage War is going to wait that even further. Well, that's Eesh. a very interesting hand for Dice because he has the Yeti, but. A lot of spells, like you don't have minions to contest the board. Second Haunted Creeper. He's getting it early too, and he's actually filling out his curve, because now he can Wrath and Creeper. I mean, that's that's the most important aspect of this deck. Oh, wow. Okay, next Ramos on the other side, though. Uh, yeah. But then turn three is dead. You're trading the coin essentially for a plus one, plus one. I'll tell you what's going on here is that uh, in this early game, when the board's rolling out this way, it favors Kalento a lot. To, to, to have his hand, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's just when both players are kind of, you know, sticking stuff out there early, it, it, but focusing back on this turn here, are we willing to trade the coin just to get an extra buff and something on the board? Well, the trade-off is that you can wrath sometimes next turn, and you do have some development okay. going forward. Fair so enough. that does make a little bit of a difference. But the trade-off for that, of course, is that he no longer has the option to play Chillwood Yeti if he wants to. How important is to play the Shade first? I guess he can play Shade or Yeti. That's the yeah. question. Of course, the other thing thinking about that is what are you actually going to wrath uh. if, you, uh, if you play Shade that in the last turn? So... Pretty tough choices. Tice, oh. I think, is really unhappy with his hand, and Kalento's hand just, wow, getting better and better. Yep. I mean, if you're not having a lot of minions early on, Spectre Knight that your opponent can flex is still really problematic. Because you have to use your minions as removal. I mean, Swipe and Wrath are cool, but you might have to use Savage Word to get rid of that minion. Well, this is a little bit of a weaker turn for Kalento, but again, his board presence is just, it's a lot right now. Well, you do develop the the we'll haunted creeper. To be. <laughs> it doesn't seem like much, but the point is that this is a building process for a This is sort of like when someone's droning up and then they're looking to like go all in. You know, they 
pull all the probes off the mineral line <laughs> and make that last little push. Probes? <laughs> You're thinking SCVs, my yeah, friend. I, I just call, I don't, I refer to them all Those as are probes. Drones. For some reason. Come on. Like, even, even drones, I refer to them as, as probes. I don't know why. I just call them, like, I even call the SCVs probes when I play Terran. I only play Terran, too. That is I true. Just, you are yeah. a Terran player. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I mean, in this case, you just got to go back to, to square one for Tice, but he's a step behind. This is where going first also does give an advantage. You present your threat slightly faster unless you have wild growth. Yeah, oh, wow. I, I mean, his deck's definitely really dangerous when it's going first, but it's more dangerous, I think, when he has a coin. That, that was sort of right. Absolutely. The idea. All right, so Colento is just going to attack there, and the swipe is a fantastic card to clear the tokens. Sort of. I mean, Spectral Knight's the one that can't be targeted, so yeah. I, that, that guy's fantastic to have stuck on the board right now. Well... This Do you use Savature as a removal card? This I is going to turn. It, this is going to turn into a gigantic race right now, where I think that Tice is going to hope that Kalento is going to attack his face, and he's going to be able to get off a double Savage Orb. That's what I think is going to happen. Yes, effectively six points of mana. If he will have seven, but he could actually clear, like leave yeah, the shade, obviously. I, but I don't. I don't know if I like this. It's definitely reasonable. You, you do get some efficient. I mean, you get some pretty efficient attacks out of it. You can heal it up yeah. with the farce here. Yeah, I suppose that's this is this is why this card's in here is to try to prevent these, you know, uh, like a mid-game board swing here. Yep. And, then and he still has a copy of Savage War in his hand, so you know he's trying to make do with what he's got. Yeah, and also uh, those minions are having four attacks, so it's difficult to clear them with wrath. But there are <laughs> he has two wraths, <laughs> and he's got ways to clear it. Oh my. Um, Ty's actually set up a pretty sweet swipe next turn. Because if Kalento uses those Hunter Creepers to clear, then Swipe is going to wreck the board. It's tempting, too, for Kalento. You are draining a lot of resources as well. What he can possibly draw if he uses Wrath for one? A Keeper of the Grove? Uh, I mean, you're going to be Wrathy for three. It's, this is so effective. Yeah, it's I very rare that you get Wrath to be able to trade one for one effectively. Yeah. Uh, it's it's almost it almost never happens. Yep. Yeah. Precisely, and, and not to mention that swipe is slightly inefficient too, uh, because of the echoing oozes. Oh, it's still, it's still a fantastic card. Gosh, this is such a rough board position to advertise. I mean, he's got he's got a swipe right. to help clear some of this we, stuff out, but he loses initiative when he does exactly. this. Exactly. Ancient of Lord comes down, draws two cards, refills the hand, puts a five five. Oh, oh wow. look at that. I mean, again, this is where going first in the in yeah. matchups where a person's going aggressive yeah. can be the edge. When you when you go when you go tit for tat, the, go, the player going first definitely has an advantage, a big advantage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the coin is just it's a it's a trick. It makes you feel good about yourself, <laughs> but the, it's statistically true that the player going first wins more often. For that, me, you know that does change from player to player though, because I know a lot of true, a lot of people that also I practice the with. You play. Yeah, a lot of people that I practice with, they'll have like seventy percent win rates on classes with coin, and then like thirty five percent. Do they also first. play zoo by any chance? They, they, some of me, yeah, I actually have a much higher win rate when I go first with zoo than when I have the coin. This is something that I've like to track. I mean, I, I, maybe I'm just so bad you when admit, I have no, coin. So you admit to playing zoo? I, <laughs> <laughs> I, but, but Got I'm, him. I'm, the, I'm there with Nathan. It's basically if you go first. You, you start you, you have an initiative you start doing damage first so basically if you're racing you win first you could just shackle me up and drag me away Th that that was painful too you exchanged two cards you didn't even fully clear the board and your opponent i mean the damage trickling in it's another body that you can't oh an innervate pickup you can even play another uh -uh. so. uh, i definitely am going to be well, saving that for next turn yeah <laughs> double, double five, five drop double five drop <laughs> is so powerful i like oh, the idea of having so much on the board that's nips <laughs> well uh, you know what's an, again this one, the, the fact that you're going second here, you're going to take the worst trade if your opponent even has something better, like a swipe and push. This is a pretty rare spot where I think uh, that trading ac actually is vastly superior. Look at that. That would be good. Hold the horses. Uh, I don't think that trading <laughs> anymore is a good spot. I think you should be jamming stuff on the board and, and going for the dome. Well, I mean, Savage allows you to kill off the... The Ancient of Lore, and then you can play a five drop as yeah, well. Yeah, it certainly does. I think he should just be charging and then innervating out the Spectral Light and punching his face. You think let, so? Let the Savage War be lethal. Fair enough. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you still have two Force of Nature's left in your deck. Okay, fair. That, make, that works for me. No need to trade unnecessarily. So, from the Lore perspective, those Malfurions are batting it out, and Garage is waiting for them, the boss of Pandaria. So, one of those Malfurions is going to face Garage just in a moment. Oh, okay. Did, did not know that. One of, one of them is fake Garage. Or, I'm sorry, one of them is fake Malfurion. Which one is fake? Yeah. The one who dies. Well, yeah, the one who dies is always the fake one. Is it lethal, by the way, if you go for these double five drops and your opponent 
can kill off like two of them, two of these things. Because he's, he's going to hero power it's, it's down not, the one one. It's not lethal, but it threatens it, and when it threatens it, you, it means you're going to maintain yeah, initiative I, a lot. I I kind of like the trade wow. here because it's easy for your opponent to dissect the board. Oh god, I don't like this. I, you do get a definite a huge board position, but I'm okay with this. Yeah, because I'm okay, okay with it. Well. It's not. I mean, I, this isn't the worst position to be in. If you told if you told me. Like, I had to take bets right now while I'm going with Colento. Well, you've seen so many tools <laughs> being used to remove the board, and now you have a board again. So being a druid, we mentioned that many times, it's very hard to deal with the, with the board if you're behind. Also, there's a threat of the possible combo. Especially with that swipe draw. I mean, it actually ended up being okay. Uh, and now we go to the point where Tice needs to stabilize. He's got too many cards that cost too much mana. Goodness gracious. What can you even do? Like you can play... Can you play two cards that are actually good? Uh, no. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is so painful. So we have... Well, at least both Savage Wars have been used, right? So you can't die to a Savage War, but it might be just side. direct damage. Alright, we have seven cards. Yeah, even a six the, damage right now is just Pick fine. the one you like. This is a very frustrating spot for Tice. This Druid deck has come so far, but will fall here. And he's going to be forced to rely on his Warrior deck, which remains. I mean, that's not a good position to be in. Definitely not. Well, he's going right. for a toss. I mean, this, this is a play to say, if you can't kill me next turn, I'll have two five drops. Yeah. And even that might not be enough. He just, punch, just kind of punches through everything and keeps going. Right. I mean, yeah. he doesn't need spells. He can just have minions to kill you. Well, he's not dead yet. He's getting awfully close. He's getting awfully close. I mean, I, I, I said that in 28 days later, but I knew the ending to that movie <laughs> half an hour in. <laughs> oh, Swipe wow. is going to be enough for lethal, though. Yeah. Coletto like gonna is going to take the Druid series in two games to one, but more importantly, he's going to take a three to two lead in this match. Wow, one game away from being the dream hack champion. That's just crazy. Tice is gonna have to take Warrior again. Hey man. Uh, well, you know what? He, need, he needs a pretty good start to answer early aggression. And you know, Armor Smith can deal with a lot of the one, one, one attack creatures. Yeah. It certainly helps to start pecking away at it. Clento threw away on a creeper, by the way. Yeah, he's looking for three drops at this point. So yep. uh, in this match, if he had coin, this is another reason why it's so good with coin is because you can keep two two drops in your hand. You just coin one out, play another one, and hope you have a three-drop after that. But as this stands, he's going to want to play Echoing Goose and hope to draw into either Har Harvest Golem, Harvest Golem, into Harvest Golem, Innervate, or Shade of Nexramas. How's the rest of Tice's hand? Like, he has Armor Smith, which is great. Um, Death's Bite, fantastic card. Get him. Clear the board. I think it's actually pretty good. If, if it can get that long. Yeah. I mean... He's got to stem this bleeding really early, keep it a comfortable life total, and hope that his legendaries can carry it He's got it time based off the hand that we know. That's a Fiery War Axe. It is a Fiery War Axe. So Fantastic it, card, anti -aggro. It only answers Echoing Goose one for one, which is, you know, sort of, again, the benefit of playing a deck like Kalento's is your opponent has to expend a lot of this stuff. So sometimes your mid-game cards get, get a little extra push out of them because your opponents had to use more to, to clear out this early game. But well, it also threatens a free drop if there's Harvest Golem, you play it. Yeah, I still... I, I still think, gosh, I don't know. This is, this is uh, two different lines of play here, and I don't know which one's better. Armor Smith, you know, if he'd have kept that cool Taskmaster's Armor Smith would be real. Whoa. He values the wrath, and he wants to deal with Armor Smith very fast. But that's on curve as well. Wow, uh, that's really interesting. I, I would have, I would have definitely used wrath there. I, th I think it's okay. I mean, his hand, he might need to use Wrath to cycle next that, turn. That's, I he think needs, that's, he needs a better... He needs cards. That's yeah. got to be what he's thinking about. You know, the other thing he could be thinking about is how Wrath is going to deal with Acolyte straight away. And so that, that does give him a hero power out of it. And he so does Savage Roar. Yeah, but he'll, he would have to use the Savage Roar anyway, and then he misses a hero power. That could be what he was thinking about. Fair enough. I think mostly it's like, you don't want to be stuck with double Savage Roar and no minions on board. And Warrior is going to continuously deal with your minions. Wow, and there's a Force in nature. That's a swing and a miss. <laughs> you can't even rough your own minion. I mean, Clento knows that this is... That that, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Yeah. Tice is happy. Turn four, just being blank. Yep. Now, the good news is that it's not like Warrior has the most stellar... Uh, like, after this Sludge Belcher, he still needs a little bit of help yeah. to curve out and, and have a really strong uh, a minion approach. But I, I think Clento still has some time to recover this. Yeah. He still has a Death Spite. He has some removal. 
Something that's gonna be key this game is him drawing Ancient Allure and not really drawing too many more Haunted Creeper or Echoing Oozes until he needs to draw them. So yeah. like, if he draws Echoing Ooze with Defender of Argus, that's gonna be one of his key plays this game. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, he's just gonna have to play minions, try to build board tension and hope that it, hope that it works out for the best. Well, it's cool that he has the combo in hand for him, but then again, he needs to develop the board. And this Sludge Belcher is contesting it pretty well. The problem is the Sludge Belcher now kills off the Spectrum Knight, and the Spectrum Knight flexes its most when Warrior can't interact with it, uh, and now he can, without even sacrificing that much yeah. health. He gets to develop, too. Oh, he's got I wonder if he's... On the other, on I the wonder other if he's going to develop or if he's going to use Shield Block and Armor up. This is a, this is a really big uh, difference in, in plays that a lot of people make too. Is that some people really heavily favor this development, but some people like uh, you know utilizing these shield blocks when they have two of them in their hand. You know, it's kind of important sometimes to save a shield block when you when you have only have one because it activates shield slam. But in a spot like this, you you are foregoing an opportunity cost when you choose to develop Despite here. You do risk something weird, like maybe Tice is. I think there's a possibility of something like Harrison Jones. You also can just draw into something like Cool Taskmaster like this. Yeah. But, but his, I think his thought there is more so like the opportunity cost versus the development. And since Kalento's turn five or turn four was so weak going into turn five, I don't think he's too concerned with development at this point. I think Taskmaster was a fantastic card to get, and um, also clear the clear the minion to force a wrap. This is two mana that has to be paid. So then he will only have four, where he didn't play anything on turn four. Gosh, this is tough. If you do, you can't play the Drew the Claw, so you have to go with the Shade, or yeah. whatever you draw, maybe Yeti. I think Yeti would be a pretty excellent draw. Uh, so it's not that for yeah. Cross Mini, but you know what? Defender of Argus, if he gets like another two drop eventually, yeah. if he picks up, that actually improves the hand. Echoing is obviously the, the one he's going to want with that. Right. Also, Shade is like, this This was the turn you want to play the Shade, because next turn, there is a possible Geddon, and right now, Shade will be trying to escape that Geddon wrench. Yeah, well, for now, he still has that Death Bite that he can push out and uh, I guess do other stuff. He also has a Shield Block to start digging for cards. It would be so interesting if he actually plays Death Spite and then attacks face to set up a kind of kill for the Shade next turn. But then he, he has the board, so it doesn't make as much yeah. sense. Ooh. Ooh, that's an ooh. That's an interesting one. And Defender. And then actually Defender will buff three minions. Right, but it doesn't... It doesn't... Like, the Baron Geddon will actually destroy everything except for the Shade of Next Ramus. Well, no, you remember though, everything's getting plus one, plus one. So the Baron Geddon... Right, right, but he just uses his minions on board, existing, to does, pick does apart. The does the Shade not live, then? Or shade will be 4-4. Four, four. Well, the Shade will live. It's just that you lose the Echoing Oozes without being able to present a problem. Because the, the thing about Echoing Oozes is that it can stall and pressure for a decent amount of... Uh, while other things can do damage, like Spectre Knight, like Yetis, etc. Then he'll be I mean, look, look, just look at what he's going to do if that effectively does. He's able to draw a card and yeah. clear the board. And then again, like, ooze and... I think he's thinking about that, but he can't be for hard. certain. Yeah. And I think, it's I too think, hard to pass, though. Yeah, honestly. I think the risk of your opponent not having Baron getting in a spot like this is probably worth more than the risk of playing through it. He's actually going to keep his shade hidden, too. Well, it's going to be the right play to keep it alive because Baron Geddon is almost certain to come down here. Yeah, he's going to pick up two cards off the Echo like two. That's, That's really actually, painful. Defender of Argus is effectively a 5-6 for, for mana at this point. Not well, bad. Sort of. It's split, it's split out among, a bunch, amongst a bunch of units. You can say 11 stats for four mana. Yeah. And when you put it like that, it's like, whoa! It's a great card. It is not bad card. Do you, everything. do you have to play Baron Kid here? Maybe, is there an alternative? I don't think you have to. I think it's pretty solid, though. Yeah. Well, if you play Baron Geddon, there still is Defender of Argus and um, the Shade. And the Shade contests with Baron Geddon. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking of alternatives that we don't have to go there. We can use uh, Cool Taskmaster instead. We can use other rates of yeah, removal. I, I think Big Game Hunter is actually in his mind. When, he, when he's going to play this Baron Geddon. If this gets big game hunter, he's going to be really far behind. Yeah, with so three has, minutes of board. He has Brawl to kind of pick up the pieces, but, you know, all of his armor gets shredded by then. Uh, brawling, a, you know, a 2-3 and a 4-2 is <laughs> not exactly the most appealing spot in the world. I, 
I think this Gorhal actually is a little bit better than, than playing Baron again. I think Gorhal is a fantastic card to play. Like, this is the best moment, and you'll, you'll also start picking up those minions. So, if Druid is not pumping minions uh, fast enough, you'll be just killing them. And uh, Ty still has a lot of health, like, healthy 30. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes into charge, just straight in the face. Yep. Yeah, with the combo, you, you just want to tag. Yeah. I actually, I actually like unveiling the shade in this spot, too. And just drawing another go hell hit. Well, you're, you're going to see Brawl here a lot of times, too. Uh, and I, I think that's on his mind, for sure. I, and I think the five damage is a little bit much to sacrifice at this point. Yeah, Brawl is going to happen no matter, no matter what, so you probably want to attack. Okay, he, well, it's not going to happen he, no matter does what. Does he open himself the Black Knight, then? And, like, removal? He does, but you know that, that was sort of the uh, the trade you made when you decided to develop this. But I also you deal with the armor, so uh, a possible not shield. To use card. He's got to, he's got combo in hand, so he's just got to get his opponent close to like a lethal point. If, if this board doesn't get dealt with, it is lethal at this point. Yeah, I, that is true. Yeah. The other thing too is that if he takes his time to attack with the shade, it might kind of send the image that. Uh, no, oh, that's, that's it. Oh my is. gosh, that's the best yeah. brawl. Loses. Uh, you know, two to three points of damage when that when that's the brawl outcome too. That might be the difference maker. Well, he still had a Taskmaster and an Execute, but uh, now he can save them. Okay, how much? That's five attack on the Gorehal, right? So he still should yeah. be careful of a cool Taskmaster. Well, on the Spectral, Spectral Knight is definitely going to be the one you play now if that's five attack. You I think so? Because he still has the opportunity to cool Taskmaster. Uh, I, I mean, charging's not bad either. And you put Haunted yeah, Creeper. I, I mean, yeah, it's I definitely don't want charging you. either. Yeah, I like it. That's a lot of damage there. Oh my goodness, we could be staring at potentially a last couple turns oh here. Oh my gosh. This uh, is he needs a way to, like not die in the next by, by either taunting up and clearing the board or, or some variation of both can he actually do something oh my gosh Sylvanas doesn't help wait is that it i mean he can cool taskmaster execute uh and then if he armors up is he out of range yeah he's out of range yeah, of he's combo. one off one damage off and then he has an extra already to put pressure back? Oh, I mean, oh, I guess his opponent's attacking more, I guess, but you're floating at the same health where Alex Ross doesn't really have a big high impact at the moment, what other than going aggressive. Spot. What are you going to do here? Like, just attack, armor up, and develop Savannas? Well, you're gonna armor up. You're gonna, you wanna kill off this, uh, uh, this Druid Claw, and you have to use Execute to do it. This might be one of those spots where I think Tice is gonna weigh his options and be like, I, I don't think playing around combo is a potential right now. I just have so much mana in my hand that I need to get it. It might be. Lost. Yeah. And, and if that's the case, then he just loses and Kalento is going to be the winner. He also seen one Savage Roar, so he, so he might win his chances, chances and say, hey, there is no second Savage Roar there. Yeah, I mean, that's another, that's okay. a very realistic possibility, too, especially when your opponent's only got three cards in their hand. So Savage Roar and Force Nature are about the same damage. It's six damage per piece here. Yeah. Wait, if he plays no, Grumash, Grumash, he's just dead. Grumash. Grumash means it's dead. Cool Taskmaster, execute, and armor up is his best chance. And he senses oh it. I don't know if he's going to armor up. I think Sylvanas is a really appealing play right now. He's going to go oh. for Sylvanas. And that's going to be it. That's going to be it. Colento, if he sees this. Uh, he knows. Yeah, if you look at he's shaking his head already. There's a little bit of a smile. Colento is your dream hack winter champion. Congratulations. Incredible GG. finish. Wow, unbelievable. Able to lead this aggro druid deck to a 3-0 finish in this best of seven series. Malkyrian dominating Garage. What an Fantastic incredible game. performance by Colento. Mulligan's on point, making great decisions. You know, I, I've said in the past, Colento focused a lot on forward-centric trading, but in this tournament, he really turned up the heat, and I think this is a really big moment for Colento in his Arsenal career. You're going to see this guy really start to dominate now that he's really found finding a balance between keeping the board under control and, and putting on the aggression of your opponent and really putting him to the test. Another big win for Cloud9. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> I had to say it. <laughs> the <laughs> man of the moment. Colento is your Dream Hack Winter 2014 champion. Yeah, buddy. There's the confetti. That's all for <laughs> you, oh man. Oh, my God. What is happening? Colento, well played. Oh, Congratulations, man. So man. Fantastic. Wow. Unbelievable finish. 3 0 with Druid at the end. Take it. It's yours, man. Uh, yeah, I want it to be on the middle. <laughs> oh, sure. Let's have it here. Well, Colenso, you did it. Another tournament win, but this was the last premier tournament before Goblins versus Gnomes. Uh, what does this tournament mean to you specifically? 
uh, just another regular tournament. Business as <laughs> usual for Colenso. He is excited. Is. You can see that. <laughs> All right, Colenso. Uh, you know, let's talk about that series a little bit. That was a little. That <laughs> <laughs> that was stressful, but not as much as this confetti cannon coming at me, let me tell you. <laughs> Colento, that, that series had some hot, really intense moments. That Druid versus Druid in Game 6, or Game 5, or because of Game 6, I don't know, Game 5 was really important. Yeah. Uh, talk about the, your overall strategy of how you approach the series, including some of the important turning points. So, um, for my lineup, I bring two entire aggro decks and uh, two mid-range decks. Um, I, I had the main weakness of this lineup. It's like it, it's vulnerable to Miracle Rock. I wasn't expecting to see. I wasn't expect. Uh, I didn't expect to see many Miracle Rock players, and um, any kind of Druid, and uh, uh, Control Warlock. So uh, uh, Thais was a pretty um, um, hard opponent for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was a very difficult uh, opponent, but you did it. And you know one thing I want to bring attention to once again is Hunt. You won without Hunter, and this is one of its peak performances in the metagame. People consider Hunter ban-worthy in a lot of series, I mean, uh, alongside with Warlock, and yet you didn't even bring it to the tournament. Uh, that's really impressive. I don't know if I have a question. I just want to tell you that's that's <laughs> freaking awesome. Yeah, I think it's great too. Yeah. Do, do you I, think that so many people were playing Hunter that there was just going to be so many counters that not bringing Hunter ended up being a stronger strategy? Um, I'm, I'm basically I was expecting every Hunter and uh, Zoo player um, that every Hunter and Zoo player will be um, knocked out from the tournament uh, because of anti um, aggro decks. But I couldn't bring mm, not entire matchup as well because I would be probably one of those control players who would be knocked out. So mm, yeah, I didn't bring Hunter because I was thinking it's it's kind of weak. And if you want to bring Hunter, you need also as well to bring uh, Agro Warlock because it doesn't make sense. Like if if you have only one Agro deck, it can be banned if you're playing against control decks. Um, so I, I just didn't want it to lose uh, to entire Agro players. That's, that's how I, think. I think it's a really well thought out strategy and it it definitely is. the difference between winning Dreamhack and, and oh, yeah, potentially certainly. not winning well, Dreamhack. Uh, <laughs> Colento, I have a gift for you. I will pass a $10,000 check for first place. Wow, a job so well done. As uh, This was one of the hardest, and many would argue, the hardest Hearthstone tournament to date, but you've done it and once again have proved to a lot of doubters that it does take a little bit of skill to play some Hearthstone. Question uh, to Colenso <laughs> then. How do you do it? You won Prismata, you won Vyagis House Cup, you won Dreamhack Winter. What's the, what's the way, what's the mindset, of how do you win those tournaments? Mm, you, you just need to, uh, I mean, you should expect decks uh, from, from opponents which will be po probably popular and you should bring lineup which will not be, be bad against it and just play without making any general mistakes, that's it. So basically, just be Colenso. Okay, that <laughs> works for me. <laughs> I mean, to predict the way you do, to prepare the way you do, and play the way you do, it's not such an easy task, but it's an inspirational story because, once again, Colenso wasn't always uh, the most well-known player for his tournament results. He's come here all the way from Ukraine, representing Cloud9, and, you know, a lot of people peg them as one of the favorites, but it's always hard to live up to the hype. But you did it, and you beat one of the hardest roads to get here, including your teammate Strife Grow, in an amazing seven-game win set, and, of course, over Tice, uh, four to two to close things out. I, I, I am just so proud of you, Colenso. I mean, I, the only question I have left is, who, is there any person that you'd like to thank to help you with the win, uh, whether it's people or teams, organizations, etc.? Um... I guess I, I can. I, I want to thank my team Cloud9 for support they provided to me. Um, they cover all expenses for, for traveling because it's like a dream hack that don't cover it. Uh, can I give a shout out to all sponsors? Sure, go for it. Man. Okay, I want to give a shout out for Cloud9 sponsors uh, Logitech, HyperX. Um, can you remind me uh, if <laughs> Air Force Reserve sure, is our sure, sponsor sure. or not? We have, we have Law Class, we have Air Force uh, Reserve, we have Sidekick, we have Alienware, and a couple of great sponsors. <laughs> we have Kingwin as well. You can yeah, remember yeah, hundreds but, but and hundreds of cards and permutations. Well, but I mean, this, sponsors. Has a, this has been a long day and two back-to-back -back grueling yeah. matches. Many people support you, Colenso, yeah. basically. Hmm. Awesome. Is there any yeah. other people that you'd like to thank, too, uh, not, not related to Cloud9? Anybody that helped you with the success for the tournament? 
Um, I don't know, I didn't practice much b before. I guess I practiced a bit against uh, Striker. And it helped me a bit uh, to, because I had a better understanding of uh, what is good against uh, aggro matchups. Um, I guess it, it affected my decision to bring decks I, I did bring. So thank you to Striker. All right, well, Colento, uh, that was that was quite the performance. Guys, this brings us to the end of the tournament. Do we have any questions to Colento or things we want to talk about before we wrap things up here? I think you just had a long day, and I think you're tired after those back-to-back -back grueling matches. But just phenomenal play, and congratulations. I'm just super happy that you won, and uh, now we can go back to playing Gladder again, the thing you love. Uninterrupted. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's what uh, Hearthstone is pure at heart for at least Galento. Uh, well, that does it. And that wraps up the year for DreamHack Hearthstone. Hope you guys had a lot of fun and you guys have been engaging. We want to give a shout out to all the people that made it possible, including Razor and Asus for the tournament event and Via Game for putting on the stream, as well as all of the DreamHack production crew. From Frodan, Nimsh, Amble, and the winner of the entire tournament, Kalento. Have a good night and we'll see you guys next time.